Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and I have a game review for you for Sonic Forces Speed Battle. It's a brand new game out for iPhone and Android, and I want you guys to check it out. So let's take a look at it together, huh? <laughs> Okay, so if you're the type of person that hates clickbait, I'm not going to make you wait until the end of the video to find out should you play it in the question of Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Yes, you should play it. If you love endless runner type games, I definitely recommend checking it out. After all, it is free and it's a lot of fun, so might as well check it out. But this review is about why I think you guys should play this game. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right into it. Sonic Forces Speed Battle plays very similarly to the previous Sonic Endless Runner games on Android and iPhone, Sonic Dash, and Sonic Dash 2. So if you're already familiar with those games, there's not really going to be a whole lot different in terms of gameplay. What mixes this game up from the others, of course, is the fact that you're actually playing against other players in real time using your phone or tablet. And this game has a lot of different characters that you can play as in the Sonic universe. You have all the classic ones you can expect, of course, like Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Shadow, you know, Silver, all those good characters. You also have some of the other secondary characters as well, which I don't know all the names off the top of my head, but there was like SBO and there's some robot, I forget what the name is. And there's just all kinds of other characters in the Sonic universe that you can play as. You can play as Metal Sonic and whatever, I haven't unlocked them yet, but I did unlock Chaos. So if you're not really familiar with Endless Runner games, just a quick rundown of what this game is about. Whenever you go through the races in the game, you choose your character that you want to race as, and you race against three other opponents at the beginning of the match, of course. And at the very beginning of the match, you collect some rings, you avoid some obstacles, and you'll collect power-ups. These power-ups can be used to your advantage in various ways, such as setting up traps, shooting the other players, kind of Mario Kart style, as well as a speed dash and a shield power-up. And there's, of course, some variations on these different power-ups as well, depending on the character that you're playing as. Each character has four different powers that they can use. They all have a shield power-up, and then they have three other powers that are unique to them, or sometimes not unique to them. Some characters do share the same powers. Of course, like most other racing games, as you may have guessed it, the objective is to get the best place you possibly can. First place, ideally, but second and even third place sometimes isn't too bad. So, whenever you finish a race, you get a number of trophies, depending on your positioning in the race, or if you did really bad, you might even lose some trophies. The trophies will determine your overall tier in the Sonic Forces universe, as far as how high ranked you are. The more trophies, the better, obviously. As you earn trophies, you will unlock higher levels of tiers, which means you can play different courses against tougher opponents, as well as potentially unlock higher awards. At the end of a match, you'll get upgrade points for your characters, as well as rings, which are used to upgrade your characters with. You have to have enough upgrade points for the character to increase their level so that you can spend your rings in order to increase either some ability or the number of starting rings that they have in a race. The rings that they have in a race versus the rings that you use to purchase character points are completely different as the rings in a race determine your maximum speed in the race. These upgrade points are also used to unlock new characters as out of the gate there are several characters that you are unable to use in the game. You have to use these upgrade points in order to unlock various characters, and the requirements depending on the characters can vary. Like most other Endless Runner games, the gameplay is based on swipe movements. So swiping left and right will change the lane that your character is racing in, swiping up will jump, and swiping down will slide. Also on the bottom of the screen you have your th icons for the three power-ups. You will tap these icons whenever you're ready to use a power-up, and that's pretty much all there is to the controls of the game. Uh, the game has very responsive swipe controls, and that is something that's very important to know for endless running games, because not all of them have uh, very responsive controls. Now this game is pretty graphically demanding for an endless runner game on iPhone and Android, so you do have to keep that in mind 
you'll probably need a pretty decent phone in order to get good performance out of this game, as well as responsive controls. Uh, so if you're experiencing a lot of issues with this game, do keep that in mind that this game is probably going to be a lot more intensive than something like Subway Servers. So if you don't have a great phone, you might want to check out something like that instead. The competitive races are really fun in this game. There's a lot of great moments. I've had a lot of races that I won just barely on the skin of my teeth, or I was in first place for pretty much the entire time, and then I got slammed right at the end and ended up in fourth place, which, of course, was pretty embarrassing, you know, since I was doing so well beforehand. But this game has a lot of fun and interesting race moments. It reminds me a lot of Mario Kart in a way. Uh, with the way that plays out. It's kind of funny that this game is a lot more fun than some of the other Sonic racing games that we've had in the past, like Sonic R. Uh, definitely has a great formula as far as that. But that being said, I do have a few complaints that I'd like to mention. For one, the upgrade system that you use in-game can be slightly pay-to-win due to the fact that you use your microtransactions to purchase the Red Star Rings and of course, you need red star rings in order to be able to unlock chests without waiting. So you have to consider that if you want to be competitive in this game, you may have to fork over some money. I would have preferred if they would have used the red star rings instead to maybe quickly unlock characters, but have the upgrades be in a completely separate thing. Maybe upgrades be timed for everybody, for example. Something that would kind of even the playing field for people so that skill would be the ultimate determining factor rather than how fast you could upgrade and therefore get a slight advantage over people. Now that's not to say that microtransactions roll over this game entirely. I would probably say 90% of it is skill, but 10% of it is how fast you can actually upgrade your characters because if you can upgrade your characters, you can get just that slight advantage to where you can go slightly faster, begin the race, or have slightly better power-ups which can, of course, help turn the tide in the race whenever the heat is on. You know, when you got two similarly skilled players, if you have one that has a higher upgraded character, they probably stand a better chance of winning that race unless, you know, luck has it and the other player just happens to eke it out over them. So I would have preferred the microtransactions to solely go towards only unlocking new characters faster, as well as, of course, adding some cosmetic features, like maybe doing like Sonic Forces did for the console version and let you... Uh, change up the characters in some way, add accessories, and change their colors and things like that. Something that's really cool. Heck, it would have been really nice if they gave you a create a character feature in this game. Uh, that would have been something that would have been really nice to see. But that being said, I really do enjoy Sonic Forces Speed Battle. I think it is a fun game, but you do guys have to, of course, keep in mind that the microtransaction system really is not the best. Uh, that's really the biggest complaint I have. The other complaints I might have to mention, of course, is that there is a lack of courses. Like, every time you unlock new tiers, you do get a new course or two. But it would have been nice if they had a lot more courses open at the very beginning. Because you play through a lot of the same courses over and over. Or maybe some variations in the course layouts would be nice as well. Of course, given that this is an online games as a service type game, I expect that this game will improve as time goes on, or at least that's the ideal hope, of course. Um, I still will be playing this game, of course. If you are really interested in checking this game out, I want you guys to check the link in the description. That'll get you a link to download the game. It would also help me out slightly in the game as I'll unlock an extra chest or something like that for inviting you. So um, if you actually have any interest, go ahead and use that link or or not if you don't want me to have that extra chest. You don't want me to have that slight advantage over you in the game. <laughs> But anyways, I hope you guys really enjoy this video, of course. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below, of course, as well as give me a like and sub if you really like this content. If you didn't, of course, don't forget that thumbs down button on your way out. But that's all I've really got time for now. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this video nonetheless. Uh, but till then, Down Phoenix, out.